gorgeous brewery, Blowfly Bitter. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got one today from London, believe it or not. This is from the Gorgeous Brewery, based in a place called Highgate in North London. Now, believe me, Highgate is a fucking posh area. Not for the likes of a rough bloke like me. Actors live there. Basically, anybody with money lives there. You can't be poor and live in Highgate. It's very fucking posh. And this lot, that's where they're, that's where they're based. And <laughs> I'm just looking at the label. The label's all a bit wonky. It doesn't fucking bother me in the slightest. Uh, they're a very small type of, I wouldn't say a microbrewery, but where they're brewing from is very small. And they're based around the back of a pub called The Bull. Now, believe me, that area's posh. So their running costs must be really high. And I've been, I've actually been in that pub called The Bull. The fella who um, tattooed my hand, actually, um, an Aussie fella, he did that tattoo. He uh, he was leaving, he was going back to Oz. And we went for a beer in there. And I do remember that pub as being very expensive. It was okay, don't get me wrong, it wasn't a bad pub. But the area, I mean, I think, to be honest, I think Boris Johnson's kids go to a school in Highgate. That's how fucking posh it is. What I was doing there, I don't know, but I was there, and I've been I've been to Highgate a few times actually. But you get you get the picture. It's not it's not a working class area, if you know what I mean. Now I've looked up this brewery. They look quite good. They do a, a wide range of beers, and I'm quite happy they do a bitter. And that's why I bought this because I'm I'm intrigued by these small craft brewers that are trying to brew bitter because, you know, anyone can brew, an, well, I'm not saying anyone can brew an IPA, that's a bit of a flippant statement, but everybody seems to be brewing IPA. And when I see a brewery doing bitter and stuff like that, it always draws me to it because that that's our heritage. You know, and there's, um, there's a fella on YouTube, he's an Italian fella, his channel's called v Vincenzo's Plate. If you like cooking and all that, watch it but he gets really wound up by people who try and bastardize italian cooking throwing in other stuff he has a rant at gordon ramsay you know gordon ramsay and marco pierre shite or white is his name i can't remember it's probably interchangeable but they're brewing oh, they're brewing <laughs> they're cooking um what are they cooking oh it's at carbonara and he's fucking ranting and raving but what I like about that, he's passionate about tradition. Now, you may say, oh, he's an old fucker, he needs to move with the times, you know, experimentation and all that. But I get where he's coming from with, you know, craft brewers just brewing pale ale. Yeah, IPAs and pale ales, they're great beers, don't get me wrong. But come on, you have to fucking diversify. Why not look at, you know, this country's traditions? Why are you looking to America, you know? But anyway, I'm not going to go into that rant. I've done it a thousand times and I'm not going to do it anymore in this video. <laughs> There's going to be other videos where I'm sure I go into it. Let's get back to this stuff. Now, as I say, these intrigued me because they were brewing bitter. And I'm always going to investigate a craft brewer who does bitter. I want to see how they're faring in brewing traditional British beer. And... The website's quite funny, actually. They've got a reference. This is this is the best beer I've ever tasted, and it's from one of their mothers. I <laughs> just for fuck's sake, come on, man. How about a, a bit of impartiality? But I'll tell you something. I will say this: if this is a good a good bitter, I will let you know. If it's dog shit, I'll let you know as well. 
So there you go. So oh, one quick one before I get on to the next section. What I what I found fascinating about this lot, they brew a beer that's based on hemp and cannabis. Now, you may have your anti-drugs people and people who, you know, don't believe in all that, and that's fair enough. But my missus has got um, uh, osteoarthritis in her hands from hairdressing and all that. But she takes cannabis oil, and it's like a miracle cure. And she actually sells it now. And the amount of people that have been ranting and raving about what a miracle cure it is. And it's so much so that in America, it's now legalized. And you can buy that in some states. I remember when I was in San Francisco, you could um, go past these big, big warehouses and say, cannabis delivered to your door. And you just think, you know, if it's helping someone out, why not fucking legalize it? You know what I mean? Anyway, rant over. Let's get on to this beer. Right, this is a bitter. It's 330 mil. It's four percent. It says a multi body with firm bitterness with toffee sweetness and a mild fruity finish. Sounds good. Uh, this beer is a living product, it is bottle conditioned. Again, that sounds good. Ingredients, water, Admiral, Goldings and Fuggles hops, malted barley, wheat and yeast. <coughs> Ingredients look okay. The hops choices in there is, is pretty good actually. They've got Admiral, Goldings and Fuggles hops, which of course are all British hops, very good hops for bitter. So on paper, this is looking really good. So let's get it in a glass, see what's going on. Right. Caps plain black, nothing to see here. I'm just gonna use half pint glass, there's no point. It's, it's basically half pint in here anyway, so. It's odd that they don't say to not pour in the bits, the yeast sediment that is in here because you find from some breweries they say not to pour it in, uh, certainly in bottle condition beers anyway, but they're not saying that. I, I always pour it in anyway regardless. There it is in the glass. Looks pretty murky, very carbonated. One finger white head. That is that looks a lot lighter than it is in in real life. Uh, this light is just beaming down on it, making it look look lighter. That's a quite a murky dark. It look, almost looks like a, a dunkel vice. But what are we getting on the nose? Well, sweet fruit. That's what I'm getting from here. But the aromas are pretty muted, I will say that. But I've just tried the Pennine Dark Amber and that had really no aromas on it at all, but the taste was absolutely gorgeous. So, you know, with with these, it, it may not be an indicator of a, a good beer. That's what's really sweet though. It's like sweet cherry. Faint, it's, it's quite faint, but it's definitely there. But all I'm getting is sweet fruit. Not really getting, not really getting much hot bitterness in there at all. Okay, well, the proof, as I say, is always in the tasting. Let's get it down the hatch. Bottoms up. Mmm, interesting. That's very sweet. Quite nice. This is very fruity. And them fruits are like... It's cherry. It's like a, like a sweet cherry style flavour with a little hint of 
caramel malt on that, definitely. And raisin, cherry and raisin, if you can imagine them two mixed together with a malty backbone throughout. There's no real bitterness on this at all. But I'll tell you something, this isn't bad. It's not bad at all. It's very mellow. There's no bitterness on it at all. Or is there? Very faint bitterness on the finish. And I wouldn't have called this a bitter. I'd called it a ruby ale. And you know what? That's a really nice ruby ale. And you know what? Now I'm getting some vague earthy and spicy notes from the hops. But that really doesn't transfer into the into the flavour. There's no bitter finish on it. There is some vague hop character throughout. A little earthiness and spiciness from them three different hop varieties. But mostly what I'm getting is fruit. It's like a sweet red cherry and raisin with caramel malt on top of that. And now the finish it's a real long lasting finish. There is a touch of bitterness on the finish too. Like a spicy black pepper, bitterness. But you really, well I'm saying that. It, this is very, very subtle. I will say that. The Well, no, that's a lie. The bitterness on this is quite subtle, but it is there. I do get it now. I was calling this a ruby ale earlier. The bitterness you really have to let linger. And it's quite complex. I don't know whether that's by choice or just the way it's worked out, but it does, I don't know, it just, just puts me in mind of a ruby ale. You know, one of them nice, sweet ruby ales. And then, you know, you leave it for a, you know, 10, 15 seconds in the mouth and then all of a sudden you get that spicy black pepper bitterness on the finish. Mm. That isn't bad. I would have preferred that in a 500ml bottle, to be honest. I don't, know, I don't know the thinking behind it. I don't know whether they just brew in small batches and it's more profitable for them to do it in 330ml bottles. God, do you know what? <laughs> As I'm talking, I'm getting that bitter finish. It really does creep up on you and it takes a while, but I get why they're calling it bitter now. Yeah, it's not bad. I tell you, I have to say, and I'm not saying this because, it, because they're from London. If they didn't come from London, then, you know, it really doesn't bother me where they come from. Good beer is good beer. This is a real, this is one to savour, is what I'll take away from this. You think you're getting a bitter from the label on the bottle, and then you drink it, and it's just the fruit, the sweet fruit, like, like I say, a red cherry and raisin, and malt, sweet malt, like sweet caramel malt, a little touch of toffee in there as well. That's what you're getting. And you think, oh, this is like a, a really good, like ruby ale, what I know to be a ruby ale, which is quite sweet all the way down. And then, you know, you leave it for maybe even 10 seconds and then you think, wow, that bitterness has come through 
very subtly, but it's still there. And that's quite long lasting and you, you, you've got to savor it. I really like this, but it's not one for an immediate hit. You have to, have to really analyze the flavors in this to really appreciate this beer. But it's quite nice, I will say that, for a, li for a little brewer like they are. And I'd imagine, I'm saying about the size of the bottle, I'd have preferred a 500 mil bottle. The overheads in the location that they are must be fucking astronomical. Highgate is just, I don't know, unless they've been left a load of money and they've inherited a small premises. But you know, I don't know, I can't see it being viable really because honestly the rents there are just fucking, like, well, I, put it this way, I would never be able to afford a place there, you know, even if I worked my bollocks off. And I just, to be honest, I wouldn't want to live there. No, I'm not saying about the people and all that, it's got nothing to do with that, but it's just so expensive to live there. And I can imagine their overheads are quite high running a business there. So hats off to them for doing that, you know, because if you are running a, biz a brewery there, then, you know, I'd imagine you'd be trying to sort of maximize the profits by cutting corners, but this tastes like a really good bitter. I'm quite impressed with that. It's subtle. If you do buy this, give it time. You'll appreciate it. So what's the verdict on Glowfly Bitter? Well, it's the first one I've had from this lot and I decided to go for the bitter because, you know, it's so easy to go to go for an IPA because everyone's brewing and all that and I'm sure their IPAs taste just like every other IPA. I know it's a flippant comment but I've tasted so many IPAs that, that most of them are in, indistinguishable from each other. But the bitters are a style of beer that you can, you can sort of judge a brewer whether they know what they're doing. And I have to say, this isn't a bad one. It's very, very fruity on the initial gulp and then as i said in in the review earlier you're questioning whether this should be a bitter or not because of the sweetness it's like as i said sweet cherry black currant that style of flavor sweet caramel and toffee malt in varying degrees but then you know as you let it go down that that spicy earthy back end just creeps up on you to sort of reaffirm that this actually is a bitter and i like it and do you know what it's been sat in my fridge for ages and i just haven't fancied it but i quite like it that is a really good effort and i'm i'm impressed that a craft brewer has done that and i'm going to give that a solid eight and a half out of ten i recommend that my only gripe is that should be a 500 ml bottle honestly bitter drinkers don't want to be drinking half pints if you if you're watching this glow flyer we want pints right and this is a really good effort but i could have done with a pint of that not a half pint but that's my only gripe so yeah it's not bad i'd recommend this and remember beer is working class champagne <laughs>